guys, this is Corey. Welcome to another episode of PHT TV. Uh, as I mentioned in the last uh, episode, we're going to do stuff a little different. I'm going to try to have an educational series. So this is number two in that series. What we're going to talk about today is Heritage Home Theaters, which you would think the two shouldn't go together, but it actually does. And, uh, but you know, there's, there's pros and cons and we're going to go through all that. It's kind of like the old engineering adage, you know, good, fast, cheap, pick two. So you can't have your cake and eat it too. There are pros and cons, at least in my opinion. Um, so everybody's entitled to their opinion, I suppose. But, uh, you know, we've been a top heritage dealer for uh, quite a while now. So I'd like to think that my opinion matters at least a little bit. So uh, we're going to go over those things. We're going to start in this room because I'm trying to show you exactly what your typical home theater with clips would, would look like. So, you know, of course, you've got your horizontal center channel this is rc 643 and of course you've got your stereotypical skinny towers um you know this is r072 uh this is new rp 8000 f gen 2 so that that's normal that's what most people get if, if they think about a home theater or at least the media room that's that's what you're going to go however um you know even though most most medium purchases with stuff like that is you know, the comfort level is less than five grand. I'd say 3,500, 4,000. People try to stick around that, especially in this toxin, toxic environment. Uh, anything beyond that, the, uh, the pucker factor starts kicking in. However, you know, we do get people who are willing to wire us 20, 30, 40. We've had a $55,000 sale with home theater just all in one. So it does happen. We do get these people who are like, well, what if, What's stopping me from going to the next level? Well, there's 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 a few things. I mean, the short answer is nothing. You you just need to know the pros and cons. So the good thing about these is that you know, first of all, they're skinny and they 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 look nice. You can put a bunch of gear real close together, especially once you start dealing with subwoofers. I mean, this stuff just takes up a lot of width. This is a fairly small small room, and I'm able to. Com you know, I'm able to cram a bunch of stuff in here just because they're skinny like that. Um, so that's, you can't go wrong with these, especially R 72s or 3s. They're very comfortable. So for sure, consider them. Um, but we're, we're starting to see what I call the rise of the hybrid system. So the, it's been around for, for a while, of course, but we, we're starting to, it's, it's starting to become the norm more than the exception. So used to, um, when home theaters first came out, you almost, it was pretty normal to have two separate systems. Uh, of course, the showroom, you know, we've got several systems, but that that's not normal at all. Um, at least back in the 90s when this started becoming popular, I'd, I'd like to think at least that the norm was you had a separate two channel listening room, uh, which was, you know, popularized in the 70s and 80s. Uh, but then you had a family room, you know, you had your TV, you had, you know, your smaller speakers, that type of thing. As time went on and stuff got more expensive, we're starting to see more situations where it's like, you know, I want a home theater, but I want my two channel in the same room. I like my chair. I like my acoustic treatment. Um, you know, I like having nice um, mains. So why can't I combine the two? So we're starting to see more and more of that. People's two channel is actually their home theater setup, just neutered down a little bit. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see, especially the core malls and the scholars, um, people will have two scholars and they're like, why do I have to buy crappier speakers just to use a home theater? So they'll put Los Galas in their home theater and then uh, basically they'll nerd it down the two channel mode. The interesting thing about um, doing this nowadays is like with your ni nicer Marantz um, type of AVRs, your pre pros and whatnot, you actually have two crossover settings and you can um, you can still have your subs. You don't have to. A lot of people think they have to get up, turn their subs off to listen to two channel. You don't have to do that. What you can do, uh, what what helps us out, 
uh, with these hybrid systems is that um, you could actually have a normal setting. So let's say normal, typically you would cross over 80 hertz or, or whatever. Uh, a lot of people with home theaters, very not common, uncommon whatsoever to like bump up the sub levels like 60 dB even, you know, at least three. A lot of people run six. Your true ba base heads may run eight or 10, but um, most people are closet base heads in my opinion. So running your sub 60 dB hot is, is pretty normal. What you can do though, in two channel mode, you can actually have a totally different set of parameters that actually kick on automatically. You don't have to do a thing. So, um, you know, you put on your favorite album you can make that sub fall back down to flat. And you can actually change the crossover point. So you can say the crossover point is 40 hertz, it's flat, but then as soon as you start listening to you know, a Marvel movie or whatever, it's gonna change it. It's gonna make the subs get much hotter. It's gonna raise that crossover point. You're gonna get all that punchy bass that you may not want. Um, it, the same thing to happen in you know home theater versus versus two channel and the reason for that the reason people like to have um, music set separately you know in, in the lower um, all your bass guitar harmonic so it's not just bass guitar but a lot of stuff like that it it's actually sounds better if the mains can produce as much as possible. So your harmonics, everything is time aligned. You don't have to worry as much about you meshing the subs up perfectly. So you can get away with a lower crossover point and you can just let your subs just fill in that. You know, a lot of clip speakers, they're lucky to get to the 30 hertz, to be honest, even in a room. So um, by just filling in that bottom octave, it, it helps out. It helps out a lot. So, um, but you know, like I said, if you um, uh, turn around and get put Edge of Tomorrow in and something blows up, you want that real upper 60, 70, 80 hertz uh, type of hitching the solar plexus bass to really come through. So switching back and forth uh, like that has, has become easier with these new pre-pros. Exactly what I think's good, what I think's bad. But um, generally speaking, the good part about the heritage stuff, the best part is that the mid-range is just so much better. Um, so you just just think about um, some of these uh, 8,000 apps. The woofer, you know, you've got an eight inch woofer trying to reproduce up to, I forget exactly where the crossover point is, but I'm sure, pretty sure they're trying to reproduce up to, you know, 1.6, 1.7 kilohertz, which, you know, if you can make a three-way design and let a compression driver handle all of the mid-range, it, it's just so much more lifelike, so much more accurate. Uh, speech in particular. Um, I, me personally, I like female vocals on the Heritage way more just because um, it's just so much more detailed and, and lifelike. So the mid range is a huge step up. Uh, of course, the just because it's a two-way system in itself doesn't, you know, of course the Jubilees are, you know, they're two-way and they've got they've got great mid-range, but it, it's all about letting the compression driver handle the mid-range other than a big fat woofer that's trying to do everything else. So my personal opinion is that's the biggest reason you might want to use Heritage. Otherwise, it you know, it looks great, certain decor, um, just, you know, these skinny towers doesn't, doesn't look all that great. Um, but yeah, the horns in particular, um, a lot of your heritage actually has trickle down technology from the pro line and you know, of course all of those there um i'm trying to figure out how to word this without it seeming uh, bad in my part but uh, short story is that the horns are, are they're just a better quality in my opinion on the heritage um if nothing else um the the vertical dispersion you know you look at the, you look at these and they're 90 by 90 and they're they're basically shotgun um and uh they're spraying stuff all over the place but it's not just that it's vertical too it's 90 by 90 vertical and the the heritage stuff has a, a much more you know a lot of times they're more like 30 degrees vertical but yeah the uh, constant directivity I, i'm 
you know, I'm pretty sure these are not cost of directivity horns. I'm pretty sure most of your heritage is. So, um, Roy really feels strongly about uh, having, you know, super high quality horns. Plus, he's gotten just really, really good at your steep slope crossovers. So, used to, um, used to it wasn't uncommon to hear a speaker and you can, you know, if you're close at all, if you're at seating distance, if you're nine, ten foot away, uh, or sometimes less, which let's face it, you know, not everybody has a giant home theater, but, um, you know, it really wasn't all that uncommon to really be able to tell that your tweeter is coming from your tweeter and your woofers are doing something totally separate. It doesn't sound like a single coherent speaker. Roy has gotten really, really good at making those things mesh. And your steep slopes crossovers that Eclipse is starting to use in marketing material, that's behind it all. Roy's gotten really good at that. So, you know, if you're if you're sitting eight, nine feet away, the last thing you want to do is have it sound like there's two separate sources. You just want everything to mesh. It just wants to sound like one speaker. Heritage is way better about that uh, than the reference. It just is. So anyways, um, the bad, generally speaking, you know, like I said, we're going to go in here, we're going to go through each one of those, but generally speaking, um, you know, everybody likes their giant TVs nowadays. This is actually a pretty small TV by today's standard. This is a 65 inch. By today's standard, that's a bedroom TV, okay? Um, at the time, it, I just, I couldn't get anything bigger, to be honest. This was, uh, I bought this one just for the showroom. It, it, it tends to work out because we're pretty close, but um, yeah, the uh, the whole um, supply chain with, with TVs uh, went to hell uh, back during COVID. So, uh, I was lucky to get this, but you know, 83 inch TVs is not uncommon nowadays. But even this, it's it's relatively high. That's the problem with um, with TVs. You really need a horizontal center channel. Um, if you do not have a horizontal center channel, and you get one of these giant TVs, um, even a 65 inch, but for sure anything larger than a 65 inch. Your TV's gonna end up, you got one or two choices. Either your center channel is gonna be set on the floor, which is not ideal whatsoever, or you're going to have um, your, your TV checked up way too high, which is, you know, that's your typical fireplace type of thing. People are laying back and they're, you know, they're looking at a 45 degree angle almost. And it absolutely drives me crazy. So you don't wanna do that really, but, um, yeah, it's, I mean, if you, if the three identical LCRs is always, it, it, it just sounds the best. Um, there's, there's several examples. Um, almost anything nowadays is, you know, when somebody walks across the screen, uh, their voice is going to um, follow them, okay? Or think about Transformers 4, there's a scene where there's a dragonfly drone. You know, you're watching the TV and this drone is going, it's super cool because you can follow, you can close your eyes and you can tell what, where that dragonfly is. Another thing is uh, Metallica through the never, there's, um, the, you know, the concert videos. There's situations where the guitar is actually panning across. You can actually, you know, guitars are coming out of your TV and not just the TV, but the wall. Um, places the speakers don't exist. So three identical LCRs is always going to be the best to pull that off. It, so that ideally that's where you want to be sound wise. But yeah, these giant TVs, if you were to put, you know, a third Cornwall here and get a bigger TV, that's that that kind of sucks. So that that scares most people off. And um, because of that, that's why I've been pushing for a Heritage Center channel. It'd be much easier to just say, look, if you can't use it, you can still get Heritage, but here's a match and center channel. Uh, some people even use RC64s. These, this thing right here, it actually works pretty good, but the weird thing is it still doesn't match perfectly and you gotta keep your grills on or it looks funny. For, first of all, the walnut doesn't match at all. Um, the uh, RC64 is actually like a stained hickory. The uh, Heritage is actually true walnut. It's got a lot more swirls, things like that. 
Um, the black match is pretty good, but you still have to keep your grills on. The last thing you want to do is see, a, you know, paper woofer or whatever, and then, you know, the copper woofers of these. So visually they don't match, but it still works well enough. But um, anyways, not just the center, but there's, um, you know, there's no matching surrounds. You probably can't see it on the video, but I, I've got other reference from here, so over here. I've got the RP502S, so you've got a few choices. Um, Looks-wise, you know, most people are just going to get the RP502S. Again, you need to keep the grills on, things like that. Um, the other choice is the THX. Uh, of course, it still doesn't match. So even if you get like a black Cornwall, and then what are you going to do? You get a, a gray, a matte gray THX, uh, you know, it, it's kind of weird. So sound wise, your best bet is actually the um, the professional line. So some of your smaller, yeah, there's like an 8,000 M, I believe. Uh, some of your smaller uh, pro cinema uh, surrounds actually sound the best. It's got that um, real crisp compression driver uh, and trickle down technology. Um, like I said earlier, um, in the heritage, it's got that same DNA. So compression driver wise, that sounds the best. It, however, it still doesn't look the best. You know, you're talking about just plastic boxes with a real industrial type of look on the front. And it's just, it's not ideal, but that's where you want to be at. But uh, also on the Atmos, you know, some people are, you know, they get the heritage and they're like, what I do, there's no heritage architectural. So again, what you want to do is look for the professional line. So the pro line, there's some called the IC uh, 650T, like IC-650-T. My opinion is that that's where you want to be at. Now the T actually stands for a transformer. Um, it's got a 70 volt tap on it. And what that means is that when you're in a commercial environment, you can string a bunch of this stuff together, you use it as 70 volts, and you can have several of these speakers. That's not good stringing several of them together, you know, when you're trying to run off a typical, you know, amp. So the, uh, the pro line with those uh, transformers lets you use 70 volt. Uh, so you can get something like the KDA 1000 amp, and you can just string several in, in a distributed environment, which is what these are for, that works best. However, you don't have to use the transformer. There is actually a bypass switch. So um, you can say, hey, this is actually a home. Totally bypasses the transformer. And um, by doing that, you can just hook it up to a receiver or you know, normal home and it works just fine. Um, a lot of people, you know, it, with the with the heritage stuff, they think bigger is better. So uh, the first question I get is, well, if I'm gonna use the IC650 TU, uh, why don't I just use the 8-inch version, like IC800T or whatever? Um, you could. However, I mean, some people have done that, and they're adamant about doing that. However, if you look at the dispersion pattern, it's not ideal for the home. It's very narrow dispersion pattern. What those were made for was, like, think about going into an, a Nike retail showroom, you know, factory direct, and, you know, they've got 20 foot ceilings or higher they install these things up in uh, up super hot like that by the time it hits the floor it's it's uh it, it covers pretty well that's in my opinion but that's about the only thing they're good for um the ic 650t has got a much wider uh or significantly wider at least dispersion pattern so for the home that's really where you want to be at also just think about the cost of this stuff um you know like like i said <clears throat> Some people don't care. A lot of people, especially in this uh, environment, really does. So even Cornwalls, um, you know, you're looking at, you know, even for a pair of RF7, uh, you know, looking at 4,400, uh, just to bump up to the Cornwalls, you're, you know, you're looking at a 50% price hike and it just goes up from there. You know, the Los Galos are literally twice what the uh, um, Cornwalls are. Still goes up, Jubilees are 36, thousand and you know you still got to have the center channel so just the cost alone scares most people off however uh some aren't too bad and you know think about the cost difference in a uh you know a pair of r7s versus fortes at 600 bucks realistically 
speaking, who cares, you know, over the life of the speakers, you'll never notice it. So, um, but also, um, you got to think about uh, the complimentary gear. Like I said, there's, there's nothing that matches. So, um, you know, you get a pair of Cornwalls and you get a matching, you know, center, like the third Cornwall, you're looking at 10 grand at that point. For just, that's just your first, you know, three speakers. Um, then you got to get into, um, you know, your pro, um, you, you could have just in two surrounds, you can easily have four digits in, in your it's surround. Of course, the 502S is getting expensive at that point. So that's not very fair, but it, it's still expensive. Uh, the, um, probably the worst part expense wise is your subwoofers. So a lot of people, when they talk about subwoofers for Las Salas, they're talking about so-called fast subwoofers. I, I don't subscribe to that word. I, I think, uh, realistically speaking, the, the subwoofer speed is directly related to its SPL. You take two woofers, um, playing the same sine wave, whichever is moving faster is, the latter one that that's just it's it's directly related to SPL. So saying the subwoofer speed is it, it's 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 a it's bull crap really. So um, but there there's other things that you might want to consider. So uh, let's say you take Lascalas. Your Lascalas are horn loaded, and there is a thing with horn loaded woofers. Um, you got to consider the air impedance. So you're free to look into that. I'm not going to act like an expert here, but, um, when you get a direct radiating subwoofer and you try to match it with La Scala's due to the difference in that situation, it may not match up perfectly. So that's something to consider. And if you do get a big horn subwoofer that does match, you're looking at Buku money. So, um, but yeah, just your, just your, um, subwoofers in general that people would call fast um you know basically mean super low distortion um upper frequency response uh extension where everything blends properly that a good subwoofer like that that isn't colored that is accurate um it has good upper extension is very neutral those aren't the cheapest things in the world um if you are on a budget i would look at the uh the SB3000 by SVS, you get two of those, that, that would satisfy most people. But anyways, I'm going to take you into this other room. You can probably see the, uh, the reference room. It's lower and right next to this heritage room. So we're going to go through each one of these. And um, the biggest issue I see with the heresy and the forte, um, these, these are easy choices, especially if you don't care about the TV situation. The Fortes in particular, um, they're much skinnier than the other offerings. Um, basically, um, really the only disadvantage of these two in a home theater, assuming you even get this far, is the rear ports and the rear radiators. So, you know, of course with the Heresy, it's got a port on the bottom. And of course the, uh, the Forte, it's got that big fat radiator on the bottom. Some of your nice two theaters, um, or it's going to have an acoustically transparent screen. Most of the time, or at least a good chunk of the time, um, they're actually going to uh, make a baffle wall. And what that means is that there would be a solid wall, there would be cutouts the size of a speaker. And the only thing, I mean, you go from wall to speaker and it's just, and it's just flat. That does change your frequency response, um, and the way they, the reason they do that is that, um, you know, it keeps things from wrapping around backwards and bouncing around in the area behind the screen and, and getting all weird. But when you do that, you get much more punchy mid bass, which a lot of people like, and you can actually get um, better mid bass without having to you know, send as much power to your speakers. And so again, that's, that's, that's going down the rabbit hole. That's more than I, I need to talk about here. But I mean, just think about that. If you ever go to use a baffle speaker, I mean, a baffle wall and you want to use a Forte, uh, that's not going to work out too well. So, um, 
Otherwise, yeah, fortes are easy. Um, the, um, the heresies are a little harder with the home theater because you do have to jack them up. Anyways, on to the corn balls. The corn balls are easy choice uh, as well. Um, corn balls are very neutral and very accurate. Uh, they're very flat. And uh, a lot of this is compared to the forte, I don't know how it measures, but at least listening to them, basically the. Um, it, these sound much more flat, which the uh, the Forte fours at least sounds like it's it's a little more colored, especially with the upper uh, the upper bass, your real punchy bass. I, I like the bass from the uh, the Forte's better personally. Uh, plus, it just extends lower. Uh, but yeah, Cornwall's very very accurate. Plus, it's front ported. If you ever did go to use a, a baffle wall, um, uh, yeah, I, I just I think it would work better in that scenario. The only problem with Fortes is the, the things are wide, okay? Um, the, the problem with that in a home theater is that you're typically going to have a center channel sitting on a media stand, which is wide, and then you're going to have a couple of subs, which is wide, and then you're going to have the, um, the corn walls themselves, or, or, you know, think about three corn walls. We, we um, put together this guy's media room and... Uh, he had 12 feet to work with and by the time it sounds like a pretty decent room but by the time you get your subs in there even without the wide media cabinet it was just all we could do we only had like four inches left so um you know if you don't mind gear just literally wall to wall to wall end to end to end it, it works fine so um but yeah the sheer size of those is the issue so I'm going to skip the Lascalas and go straight to the K-Horns because Lascalas and Jubilees are in another room. So K-Horns, the problem with those is that it's, it's hard to get three. Remember we were talking about three identical LCRs. Very difficult to have three identical clip horns. And of course, yes, yes, I, I totally realize that they make smaller heritage. The problem is if it's not identical, you, you, you lose that seamless panning. So um, we've even had people, even other dealers I've seen, use the RC64 with the clip horn. So you can, you can get things to work. Yes, you can even use a Heresy. You can use Cornwall. You can use Los Galas. Any of those that are smaller, you can get to work as a center channel. Will it be seamless? Will you be able to follow those voices back and forth across the screen? Probably not. Um, you know, in my opinion, it's better to go down in the line and get three identical LCRs than it is to get the two uh, biggest speakers that you can, but then screw up on your center channel. That's just me. But anyways, um, yeah, plus just the cost. Um, and the cost would be, you know, they're, you know, 16 vibe at this point. Um, that's, that's outside of, uh, what most people want to spend, but if you did get a third one or a, a single Muscala or whatever, yeah, that's just, that, that's starting to get into where it hurts. So anyways, we're going to run over to the Jubilee room. All right. So this is our future theater room. We're not quite finished yet, but we do have some stuff to listen to. Of course, these are the new Jubilees behind us. Um, but before I get there, I want to talk about the Lascalas. Um, a lot of people want to use Lascalas in their home theater. The, big, the biggest issue here is just the depth. Um, like I said, some people, Michael Stevens is, is the, the biggest advocate of that. If you have a um, acoustically transparent screen and you've got a huge cavity behind it and the depth just doesn't matter. These things work great. However, most people do not want to do that. They want to use it underneath their giant TV. First of all, they're pretty high. So it's just like, you know, think about starting an 83 inch TV here. That's going to, that's going to be jacked up pretty good. That's not, that's not normal. Um, it's not recommended, but also, just think about putting a big TV behind these. These are these are pretty deep. These are significantly deeper than the other offerings. So he, he, corn walls, um, they're they're just way deeper. So that's going to stick out into your living room, especially if you try to use it as a center channel. 
Um, Center Channel in particular underneath the TV isn't ideal um, just because of the depth. You're going to get a lot of light reflections off of the, um, the, the top of it. What you can do is put some velvet on it. So um, you look at some of these DIY um, screen places, Seymour is one of them. They have velvet that just, I wouldn't just go to Walmart and Hobby Lobby and get some velvet, but if, if you do, you know, go to Seymour, they do have light eating velvet, as, as weird as of a term as that sounds. And, uh, you know, you could probably fabricate something to put on top. That would drive me crazy if I had to, you know, if I had to deal with the glow of the screen bouncing off the top of these things, that's just going to be huge. So that's, that's not ideal. So I've seen several people use RC64s with these, but, um, again, yeah, three identical LCRs is, is always ideal though. Anyways, enough about that. We're going to get to the Jubilees. The Jubilees would be the ultimate in home theater, at least so it would seem. Um, you know, the, the biggest advantage of the Jubilees is that your sweet spot's the size of your couch. It's just, it's huge. And um, those 402 horns is really where the magic is, uh, especially with speech. I mean, just think these things are crossed over at like 350 hertz. So you got a single compression driver from 350 hertz on a, so 98% of everything you hear is coming from a single driver with this giant horn. It, it's just, I, I don't know if you can think about the repercussions of that, but it, it's just magic. Um, a few disadvantages in my opinion, um, at least with the old ones. I have not tried this with the new ones um, and I couldn't figure it out. I've never been able to, have a good answer from this. But um, the biggest problem I ran into with the old Jubilees is that, and I think it's because the, the pro compression drivers, they really want to, they're used to throw. I mean, so what that means is that if you're sitting on the back row of a theater, I mean, you're going to hear those things loud and clear. But when you're 10 feet away, you know, it's, it's almost like a tractor beam. And these things just, if they're making noise, they lock onto your ears. And for whatever reason, it's almost like the rest of your surround sound doesn't exist, which is not a good thing. And um, I experimented so many times, I couldn't get it to work, at, at least in the um, confines of a typical 15 by 20 room. And uh, the, pr the problem was is that even if I went through and set everything up properly and I timelined everything and, uh, you know, level matched everything, if the Jubilees up front was playing something and also there was stuff happening at the rear surrounds, especially if it was the same thing, it was like those rear surrounds just wasn't there. So there were so many movies that it was almost like your surrounds didn't exist. And that, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it because of that. Um, they're, they're definitely the better speaker. I just, I don't understand the physics behind that. And the ideal situation in a home theater is that you've got stuff coming from everywhere, especially with the new Atmos systems. The, the most correct Atmos system is actually just seven identical speakers all around you. Um, anything else just starts to get in a compromise um, territory. So yeah, when when you spend all that money and you can't hear your surrounds, it, you know, it's obviously not a good thing. And I don't know if it was a setup issue, but I never could get a good answer. So that would be my only thing uh, in terms of the physics of it. The other thing to consider with the Jubilees is not only are they very expensive, but Klipsch will not split these up. And um, I, I find it humorous that some people are online trying to price them individually. Well, Klipsch won't split them up. So unless a dealer gets some in and splits them in half um, and only sends one out, you can't buy an odd set. Even if you do, Klipsch won't just sell you a DSP. So you're going to have to try to reverse engineer that. So basically, if you want three Jubilees across the front, 
you're going to have to buy two pairs, which is four of them. You're going to have to keep one as a spare. Um, I, it, it's just a weird deal. And then whoever gets the other one is, is not going to have a DSP. So I, I, it's just awkward. Um, I, because of that, it's, it, I wouldn't recommend them for home theater at this point. Um, you, you can do, if you don't mind a, if you don't mind a, uh, smaller center channel, sure. But again, you know, three identical LCRs is still going to be better in my opinion. Anyways, that's about all I have today. So we went through the pros and cons, the expenses, the physics, the looks, um, the frequency response, the matching accessories such as surround, uh, such as, uh, you know, in ceiling atmos, uh, subwoofers, um, I, I, I'm not sure what else, what else to talk about, but uh, heritage is definitely something that you might want to consider uh, when building your home theater. There's really nothing, nothing stopping you. It's just a matter of how much do you want to spend? How much room do you have? Um, do you have a big TV that requires a horizontal center or can you use three identical LCRs, which is ideal? Um, and you know, also things like, are you willing to um, have pro cinema plastic surrounds in your room or do you need to have it as, look as good as possible? Uh, lots of questions, but short story is that at least for your front two mains, heritage in general is going to be better than the reference. I, I'm I'm sorry for the <laughs> reference engineers, f friends of mine, Eclipse, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big advocate of uh, Heritage. Roy really knows what he's doing. Uh, he's really keeping that flame alive and I uh, appreciate his efforts. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to continue to uh, to try to promote it. So, yeah, the, her the smaller Heritage in particular, um, you know, uh, especially at Forte's, Fortes are incredible. Um, it, you really need to consider those for home theater if they're standalone, not within a bat a wall. Really not that much of a stretch, um, but uh, they still look good. They're still skinny. They don't take up much room. So if, if you've got a TV situation, for sure, consider those. Um, you know, just in summary, once you start getting bigger, it starts getting a little more awkward, um, but um, but yeah, it, there's pros and cons to everything. No matter what you do though, uh, at least for everything with the Jubilees, always remember you can get an odd number of, of clip speakers. So if you want three corn walls, holler at us. You know, if you want two, um, if you want two Los Scalas and a, you know, a single corn wall or something smaller as the center channel, holler at us. There's some heritage dealers will not split them up and they don't know how they don't know if it's possible i don't know i don't know if they're afraid of getting stuck with them not an issue with us if you want an odd number of anything other than jubilees holler at us it's all yours um just not an issue whatsoever we do it all day every day uh or at least talk about it i wish i could sell that stuff all day every day but such is life anyways that's all i've got and don't forget please go to paducahometheater.com Check us out, at least consider us. We get comments every day about people who have YouTube videos. Hopefully this uh, this helps. So uh, when you guys go to purchase, just uh, keep this in mind. Do you remember we've got probably the most aggressive and best rewards program in the business. Basically, you, for every dollar spent, you get a point. And at some point, you can convert those points into gift cards to the tune of 10%. So you're basically getting 10% back. Um, just think about that. And if you spend over 13 grand on a pair of La Scala's, you know, you've got 1300 bucks that you can turn around and buy an amp with. They help you out with a sub. So um, very aggressive, very good rewards program. So go to the site, sign up. It's super easy. And anyways, we, uh, unlike a lot of heritage dealers, we do have all this stuff in stock. So you want Jubilees? We got them in stock. You want anything else? Any color of this stuff, we got it in stock. So, um, got a fully stocked warehouse. 
um, heritage is their passion. So feel free to reach out, ask any questions, tell me how wrong I am, that kind of thing. Anyways, this is Corey. Talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.